Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to jump into the world of Xtool Creative Space. If you're a total newbie to design, laser cutting, or engraving, don't worry. This is the perfect video to start. I got to thinking, there's really not many videos out there for craftsmen or woodworkers who want to dive into Xtool Creative Space. So I'm here to fill that gap. If you're used to working and crafting behind a power tool or canvas, and recently grabbed an X-Tool engraver to take your projects to the next level, and you don't really know where to begin, this video is for you. I walk you through the software's features, break down all the basics, and show you how to create your first design. It's a whole new world, and I promise you, it's easier than it looks. So let's get into it and start creating. As you can see here, I have a blank X-Tool document. But how do you get there? Well, first off, you need to download X-Tool Creative Space. And this is easy to do. Just go to Google and type in Xtool Creative Space Download. And it's usually the first link. Once you're on the download page, hit this little button right here that says download. It'll take you to the bottom of the page where you can follow the directions and use whatever processing type that you have. Whether that be Windows or Mac or if you're on a uh, your phone or an iPad, there's different iOS abilities and Android abilities too. So just click on the one that works best for you. I personally have a Windows, so that's what I use. And then follow the steps to get your Xtool Creative Space downloaded. Once it's downloaded, you can open it up by double clicking on it. And it brings you to this home screen. This screen has a lot of different stuff that you can look on for different design ideas and tips and tricks. But I'm not going to go over that today since I'm just trying to keep it as basic as possible. But you may need this support center sometime in the future if you are having any problems. But to start a blank document, just come up to a new project, this plus sign. And this brings you to where I was at the start of the video. So now to talk a little bit more about Xtool Creative Space. Xtool Creative Space, or XCS, is a powerful user-friendly design software used for creating projects that involve laser cutting and even printing. Whether you're cutting wood, acrylic, or engraving leather, this software is your creative companion. Once you open up Xtool Creative Space, you'll see an intuitive workspace. On the left sidebar here, you'll see a toolbox where you can access all your drawings, text, and import tools. You also have your workspace here in the middle, and on your right, you'll have the settings panel once you have designs on your workspace. In this settings panel, you can adjust the speed and power of your engraving. I'll go a little more in depth than that in a second. So first off, let's figure out how to insert an image. So I come to the image icon, the first icon on the top left of the toolbox, click it, and double click on the image that I want to add to my workspace. So here is just an image of a cowboy hat. So one thing that you may be new to are file types. For Xtool Creative Space, you'll most likely use file types such as an SVG file, a JPEG file, or a PNG file. But what does all that mean? So let's break down my favorite file types in XCS. A JPEG is a raster image made of pixels, perfect for detailed photos. But keep in mind, zooming in too much can cause it to lose quality. A PNG is also a raster image, but it has the ability to have a transparent background. It's great for logos and intricate designs and won't lose quality when you resize it. An SVG file is a vector image made of lines and curves instead of pixels. The best part, you can scale it to any size without losing clarity making it perfect for cutting or engraving. This image that I have here is a JPEG image because you can see the background around the image. I can remove this background by hitting the edit button here on the top bar and using the magic wand feature and click on the white space and that removes the background. This is necessary because if you don't remove that background, it will engrave around that square rather than this engraving inside the square. So once you have your file imported, using this top bar here, 
You can resize, rotate, or adjust your image as needed. You can see on the X and Y axis, this changes the origin point on your page. And this is based off of inches. Here, W and H is your width and your height. Right now, they are locked together, so if you change one, it'll change the other. So let's say I need a 4-inch long engraving. The height will change with it. But let's say I like that height, but I want to change the width. I can remove the lock aspect ratio and change the width. As you can see, it's changed the scale of the image. So anytime that I make an error like that that I want to go back and change, here's the undo and the redo button on the top of your page. So I'm going to undo what I just did. I can also click on one of the outsides of this image and increase and decrease this image size. As you can see right now, it's not locked with the aspect ratio. I'm going to lock it where it is, and now I can't change it. Okay, now let's talk about some more image tools. This image that looks like an angle, you can rotate your image. So I just rotated it 90 degrees. Next up, you can change the orientation of your image. First, you can change the arrangement then you can align it to your page and lastly you can reflect your image horizontally or vertically. A couple other image tools I showed you how to edit. You can also use this eraser to erase one part of the image that you don't like but be sure whenever you do this after you're done you either save or cancel your edit. Then you can filter your image and this would be something used if you were actually using a picture of something rather than just an outline like what I have. You can make some adjustments to the image and this is probably something that's not needed unless you're engraving a picture. Lastly you can crop the image. So let's say there's one little part that you don't want or it's a little too big. You can crop it how you want it and click save and now your image is cropped. Offset similar to the trace feature just traces around your engraver to engrave around the outside or the inside of your image. This is something that probably won't be needed for a beginner. Now let's look at the main menu function real quick. Here on the top left there's an X. This is the X tool logo. Here's how you'll save your project. There's also a bunch of different options that you can click on. This pretty much just compiles everything on this top bar and the sidebar into one easy to use location. There's also a help guide that you can use if needed. But one thing I want to show is the settings. So here you can change your unit from millimeters to inches or vice versa. You can change their language. And there's also some other file settings that you can change if needed. This is also something that probably won't be needed for a beginner. But you may need to change your unit and then the language of Xtool Creative Space. Okay, next. Now let's say you want to include text. Here at the T on the toolbox, you can click it, come over to your project and click. And there it inserts text. Then you can type what you need. Once you have that typed, you can come over here to the right and see you can score this text, engrave this text, or cut the text. For this scenario, I'm going to engrave. I can make this text bigger or smaller. but I want to make it around the same size as my image. As you can see here in the middle, this blue line that comes up, this is called auto snapping and it snaps to the middle of the image above it. Next on the toolbox is the shapes feature. So let's say I want to add a rectangle around the outside of this image as a border. I can use this auto snapping feature to snap it right in the middle of my engraving. So now my engraving has an image, text, and a border around it. Vector is also something not used very much for beginners. But here you can create points, 
or even create a shape for yourself. Below the vector are some more shapes. These are a little more intricate shapes that X Tool Creative Space gives you. So let's say I want a patch on the top of the cowboy hat of a bull. Up next are some different applications for your engraving. You probably won't need this, but you may need to use a material test array. And this is just a way to figure out the speed and power needed to create the perfect engraving. I'll link a video in the description below that shows how to use this. Below the Applications tool, there's a Projects tool. This is where you can go find some Xtool created projects that you can use. There's some projects on there that are free and some that you can purchase. And then below the Projects tab, there's an AI tool called AI Make. And here you can use artificial intelligence to make an image for you. Continuing to scroll down the toolbar, there's a select function. So I use this and I can select my images on my workspace. Below it is a grab function where I can move around my workspace. And below that is a layering function where I can see the layers on my workspace. I can lock them or if you move one, it doesn't move. I can make them invisible as well. This is important when you're using a bunch of different images and text because you might just need to keep one image where it's at. So that is about everything that's needed on this left toolbox and this top toolbar. Now let's go over to the right hand side of the screen and look at the right toolbar. So you can see I have the frame selected. With this frame, I can score it, which just makes a mark around the square. Engrave it, which fills in the square and will make the whole thing dark. Or cut it, which obviously cuts it. So let's say I want to score around the outside of my cowboy hat. So I can change the power percentage, 0 to 100%, and I can change the speed from 1 millimeter a second all the way up to 80 and this varies based off what type of engraver that you have. You can also change the amount of passes. Some of this bottom part is really not needed. So let's say that I want to make it a deep engraving. I want a high power percentage and a low speed. Or on the other end, if I want a very light outline, I may want a high speed and a low power. When you go to cut an image, the speed allowed is a whole lot less. Notice it only goes up to 20 millimeters per second. A lot of times when I'm cutting through small basswood, I'll use six or seven millimeters per second, 100% power, and two passes. So now I'm gonna engrave this project on a small coaster. I'm gonna score around the frame at 70% power, 80% speed. I'm going to engrave the cowboy hat as well at 70% power, 80% speed. I'm going to engrave the image of the bull at 70% power and 80% speed. And I'm going to engrave the howdy at 70% power and 80% speed. And you'll see how it looks different when it's filled in like this howdy and this bull, when it's an image like this cowboy hat, and when it's scored like this square frame. So once I have all the speed and the power to where I want it, I can click process. As you can see, this is a very large engraving that I won't want to make it this large. So I'm going to make it a lot smaller. That's better. Now it says that this engraving will be completed in six minutes. Here at the bottom, at the origin point, you can change where on your piece of material you want the engraving to start. Usually I like to use the top left corner 
but sometimes it's important to use the center or one of the bottom corners on your engraving. But rule number one is before that you do any project, make sure that you frame this project. Framing is a good way to make sure that your engraving is on your piece of material. If you start engraving, it's very possible that your engraving will go off the material and cut into your table. And that's something that you definitely don't want. So be sure and frame a couple of times and then hit start. The best way to connect your engraver is to come up here at the top, hit connect devices which looks like two little lines, find your device and hit connect. There's two different ways that you can connect, that's either through Bluetooth or through a USB cable. I usually like to use a USB cable. But either way, make sure that your engraver is turned on before you can connect. You can also look at this top bar here where you can change your canvases. So let's say you have multiple different engravings and you want to keep them separate, you can change canvases. You can also change your processing mode. So on a flat surface will be any type of flat engraving. The roller and chuck tool will be used for oscillating engravings. This will be great for a tumbler, a Christmas ornament, a glass cup or anything like that. The slide extension is only used if you have that certain type of engraver. It allows you to engrave a bigger engraving area and then screen preparation is also for a certain different type of engraver where you can actually screen print. But for simplicity and starting out you'll probably always start on a flat surface. Whenever you get done be sure to save your engraving and you should be done and ready to go. And that's it. You've now learned the basics of Xtool Creative Space for beginners. You can import your designs, edit them, and get ready for laser cutting or engraving. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more creative content. Until next time, and happy engraving. Have a great one.